apply the notion of monad strings to media stream programming. Yeah. Okay, so you avoided uh, the real title. Actually, what I will just do, I will scream in the eye of monad. <laughs> Literally. Uh, actually, this is what I'm just doing. I'm screaming, screaming in the eye of monad, and he goes through the monad and go out from the speaker to the speaker. <laughs> Um, let's just to check out. Uh, so it is running. This is uh, the Pascal code. Uh, so it's the main program running. Uh, here is a sort of double tech interface. One to launch the, the. So Jack is a program that connects uh, audio to or program audio to system audio. Uh, we, we, we may have a look here from time to time to this uh, number in red that is the number of samples that are lost since the last reset. And I essentially spend all present week to reduce that number. Sometimes it blows up to 100 and suddenly the sound is not cool at all. But, um, okay, and uh, here are the slides. So screaming in the IO monad. Uh, that's actually a, uh, I am I am for years actually trying to to have paper in in, in real serious conferences, <laughs> and, and for years my paper submitted to real serious conferences. I mean the the, the conferences next door are rejected, <laughs> and then as a security I told myself okay let's make uh, a spin off of that very interesting good clever sound deep paper. So far I wrote it down in two days. It was badly. Written, I said at the end of the paper, please refer it, forgive me. I think there are interesting things there, but we still need a bit of polishing. And uh, uh, program committee form was cool enough. And I was not, I was part of program committee, but I was not <laughs> <laughs> discussing about it, of course. And they were close enough to say, well, if you manage to polish it sufficiently, that's okay. And so that's good. Cool. Uh, yes. I, I could comment a lot more on this, but this would sound. I should. I, I, I might sound angry. Uh, up. If I do this, or should I do ups? I don't want this. Uh. Yes. Uh, okay. So, the bad side of sound programming. Uh, it has a f it plenty of irre irre irreversible side air vibrate by this passing. It's messy. Uh, we have to deal with synchronous and high rate signal, which is audio, and we have to, to deal with asynchronous low rate signal, which is an event only. Actually, I will, I will display my event with this. This is something that can be sold to control the, 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 the tones of, of an organ but actually just send MIDI, so I managed just to compute it, to, to connect it to my system. And also, eventually you get a bit, you, one can feel a bit dizzy in audio programming, because as Anton shows, that very quickly becomes sort of a uh, spaghetti play to plenty of things. On the other side, there is the not so good side of functional programming, that is pure, mathematically sound, well structured, deeply proven, etc. Well, perhaps with a bit of a sixth flavor of useless out of life emptiness, emptiness if you stick to all this because there is no IO. And what, what, what do you want to do with a program that has no IO? There is just nothing. <laughs> uh, so, so the main problem, and this is the problem I am addressing in this, in this paper, is how to be dirty keeping a clean shirt. And there are two ways to do it. The first way is the courageous way. You forget about it, you hire a dirty job to do the, the dirty boy to do the dirty job. For instance, you connect to Super Collider. But probably there are people in this audience that are connecting with, to, to Super Collider and they, are, they do have a clean shirt. The, the other way to do it is just to do it. And uh, you need to be efficient, so probably there are nice construction in your head that you would like to apply, just forget them. They will take too long to be, to be run. 
and still you can keep the good ones but uh, that allows you to still make clean programs that are reasonably for which you will have a reasonable chance that this program will actually run on your computer because uh, so the solution actually I forgot I was having this the solution was just a t-shirt enter the monad uh, following uh, Mogis, uh, Eugenio Mogis, who was actually the first one making the connection between Monad and, and uh, programming with effect, and that was popularized by Phil Wilder. Uh, so Monad programming, but perhaps pushing it a bit more, uh, with nested layers of monadic action for modeling the fact that really things are sequenced one after the other. I will explain this soon. And uh, and also, that's sort of a side, uh, uh, a side uh, benefit, a side value of uh, uh, our approach. Uh, quite a clean distinction between input that are values and output that are actually action. I will dis describe this a bit more. Uh, if you go to the web and look for, uh, so perhaps I should said at least once, what I want to do is real-time with you in a scale. Was it clear? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and if you go on the web and you read the post about this, well, you learn it's impossible. Because I didn't went on the web before, I didn't knew it was impossible. Uh, so, so, I, oops, I did it. Output and I can continue with 
recursive call on the continuation of the stream. And so that's stream programming, and, and that's very easy. And that's very efficient. Why would you invent all the things? Uh, when you run this uh, stream output to the standard input stream, it runs with no memory leak, no time leak, no nothing. It, it works just fine. What does it mean? It means that I am, I am just using what giants have developed. This is the IO monad in scale and GIC, the GHC compiler who managed probably even better to optimize this kind of program because they are very close to continuation uh, to programming with continuation and as the compiler is very good at optimizing this. Uh, so in fact what that stream allows for modeling both input stream and output stream. How is it so? You can see a monad stream as an input stream when you think that every action you have you need to execute it to get to, to, to catch the value. And you can see it as an output stream when you think of it as something where you have to define the action that will later be executed, will be executed when it is used as, a, as an input stream. So for instance, the, the, the functor instance of these strings is different like this. And this is essentially the same kind of function. Uh, by the way, monad stream are sort of explicitly lazy less because everything is guarded by an action. So this could well be defined in OCaml, and actually I will try from September to do it in OCaml to check out whether it's more efficient than in SCAP. It might well be, and perhaps I will stop using this bloody language. So the, this function that map is an exam, example of a, a synchronous function. Synchronous in a very strict sense that whenever you have one sample at the input, you produce a sample, sample at the output, which is the, the, the basis of, of, uh, of uh, stream processing. Uh, so essentially, in other fields, I'm sorry, I'm coming from automata theory and model theory logic. Uh, this is known as a mini machine, of course. And uh, so, so there is this function that can take uh, sort of a transition from function from A to, to M of B. So you take it with an input A and output something in the monad of type B and then produce a function from, from stream to stream. And the, the, the point is that this simple type A row uh, M of B actually allows to encode more or less implicitly with the the, the state monad, a function of that type, which is the typical kind of function we will use uh, when you want to implement uh, a mini machine. So it will give an initial state and then a function that says in one state with one input, I will produce a new state and the output. Uh, in the IO monad, it's even weirder than this. Uh, so if I have a, a synchronous stream function, I, I can actually uh, produce its uh, generating set function. Uh, the idea is that uh, this function will be something that will take the A, that will send that A into a channel. The channel receiving all these values will be transformed into a stream. The stream will be given to that function, which is given as an argument, which will produce a stream of output. The stream of output will be uh, is pushed into a channel, channel in the, in the sense of the channel library, and this, 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 this channel is read, at least one element, which is actually what, what is produced here. And you, you can actually define this function uh, even adding a buffer. So the, the, the thing you output is actually the, 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 the thing that, uh, or when you, you put an input, you create an output that uh, should have been produced. Uh, whatever buffer, and if you don't put a buffer, you're dead. You cannot do real, uh, real-time module in SQL because uh, actually that function will be called by the, the, the driver as a callback, and it will be called hopefully often at very high rate. And so, if you don't manage to pre-compute it some mode or to force SQL to pre-compute it, SQL is lazy. It's a bloody lazy runtime SQL. <laughs> And this is difficult anyway. Uh, so, so this 
On this synchronous stream, there is this C function that can be defined like this. So you, you just have to stream and you use it, the, 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 the values one side, the others. Uh, okay. Uh, the point is that if you do that with the input uh, stream, then you have a problem. Why so? Because the, the input stream is a stream that that as the, the action, I read an input and then I continue. But if you duplicate it, then you have two streams that are reading the input and con uh, that are continuing. So the, the input is actually distributed uh, between these two streams. So so streams cannot be cannot be duplicated. Uh, adding a linear typing things to this would certainly uh, lead to very interesting thing. Uh, so so there is a way to. That, that, that was the, the key point of, or one of the key points of my other paper that was violently rejected. I, <laughs> I, I felt the violence in my heart. Uh, perhaps I was fair. I don't know. Some people that uh, jury is always right. Referees are always right. Uh, anyway. Uh, which is which makes sense definitely. So so there is a notion of uh, you, there is a notion of monad reference. You can fork a monad action and it gives you back a reference. And that reference you can read it to, to have the, the value produced by that monad action as many times as you want. This is sort of a formalization of what is known as promises of future value, quite a long time functional programming community. But I was not there quite a long time ago. I was doing something else. So I didn't knew. Uh, and this, this provides a way to, to even define the notion of monad stream references, which are actually stream of monad references, and it works very well. And, and so you can fork a stream, and then you can read it at your convenience uh, and duplicate the thing. So it, it, goes, it goes very well. It's based on the async library, which is a so cool library to the concurrency that all programs are by construction deadlock free. I don't understand why people are using libraries that allows you to, to create deadlock concurrency theory. Incoherence programming. Actually, programmers don't only theoreticians are considering those models. Perhaps, perhaps that's a bit excessive. Uh, so, so this is what I just said. You can define uh, a notion of reference to one stream that you, that results from forking the stream in the wilderness, and then you can read it. So, and then this, this read can be duplicated as uh, freely. Uh, so it's very easy to define the sequential concatenation of, uh, of stream. Uh, this yield, uh, the, the monoid that I call horizontal, which is quite the same as the, 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 the monoid you can define over less, so the free monoid. Uh, this is essentially useless in the real-time programming, because what would be the meaning of, of, of composing sequentially two inputs, for instance? It would mean that the second input would be delayed forever. So this is only a little use, useful if you want to, to put a constant or a bounded, uh, a stream of bounded size before, because then it will be sort of a, a delay, which means a buffering, actually. So, so the, the, the another thing that is a lot more interesting is the capacity, uh, thanks to monad references, to merge two stream. What does it mean, mean merging two stream? You have two streams that are arriving. And then you just check which, which, which arrive first, and you take that one, and then the next one first, OK, it's there, and, and you merge values by the order of arrival. And this is very useful when you have several inputs. Well, here I have nine inputs. Actually, I have only one, but eventually I split them and merge them again. And so inputs that arrive when they arrive, because these are, they, they are uh, MIDI events, and so you can merge them, etc. And so this is this year also uh, another monoid, which is a vertical monoid, which has uh, a lot more uh, property and actually even induce a monad. So monad streams actually of uh, forms of monad, and you can directly program in the monad of monad stream. It, it gets a bit. I'm no longer understanding what's the meaning of the bind, but uh, who knows? Uh, so that, that's actually the way. Yes, you. you Merge stream is the, what, what you, you get as a natural uh, pairing of, of signal in the asynchronous world. And so this is the, the archetypal uh, architecture that I am uh, implementing. I am receiving an asynchronous stream of uh, uh, O1 
all should be in my state machine like this. And I have an input stream here, an output stream here. Eventually, I have an initial state here to start uh, the thing. Probably, I need an initial output as well. And uh, and eventually, there is this thing, and I can touch this. And uh, and now I show proof that it is working. Just just screaming. So not not to break you here. I will first scream very softly. Synchronous and asynchronous function. I think this is something very deep, and uh, this is 
this is something that is already addressed in, F in, F in FRP by distinguishing uh, signal and events. Because, but the point is that actually you are receiving signal with for events in FRP, FRP as well. So perhaps this is better. This can this could give some new light. Uh, however, at the moment, without type distinguishing properly synchronous from asynchronous things, then what I'm proposing, you can do very dirty programming and your shirt can really become dirty. Uh, so clearly, there, there might be, to handle this distinction between synchronous and asynchronous thing with uh, temporal logic type or model type would be uh, could help and could be implemented. Well, this is already done, sort of. So there. This would be ad hoc application of things that we have already heard this week or before. And, uh, and as I mentioned, this could be also an interesting playground for linear logic, because there are obviously inner types. The, the standard input stream should not be shared. So this it has a linear type. And, and, uh, and uh, now, if you really want, you can ask a question. Thank you very much. Jack only gives you a few frames to drop. 